Jim Rogers is a well-known international investor and author. He's written books such as The Investment Biker, A Bull in China, and Hot Commodities, as well as creating the Rogers International Commodities Index and helping to co-found the Quantum Fund. Jim, you took the decision, quite a radical one a year ago, to move lock, stock and barrel from New York City to Singapore. Why? Well, I'm convinced that Asia is the wave of the future. Moving to the UK in 1807 would have been brilliant. Moving to America in 1907 would have been brilliant. We'll see if moving to Asia in 2007 was brilliant. I've got two little girls. I want them to grow up speaking Mandarin. One of them already does. And I want them to know Asia. I think that the best skill which I can give people born in 2003 and 2008 is to be perfectly conversant in Mandarin and in things Asian. Now, in the last 24 hours, you mentioned China there. We've heard, in fact, from the industry minister that they reckon the initial cost of this awful earthquake there is going to be five billion pounds. What effect do you think, not only in loss of of human capital, but also in terms of the effect it will have on the wider Chinese economic growth story? Well, it's been a horrible disaster, as you know, thousands of people, tens of thousands of people killed. But remember, China is the third largest landmass in the world. So in the big scheme of things, and they have a billion, 300 million people, while it's terrible that we're all watching it vividly right now, Five years from now, how many people remember it? Some of the great, the many people talk about the tsunami still, which happened, what, four years ago? It was a disaster, horrible, worse, worse disaster. But in the big scheme of things, I mean, we, the world has had these horrible problems many times. Now, one of the, the sticking points, perhaps, if you like, between the two largest economies in America, America and China, is in fact the value of the dollar, which of course has been sinking south for quite some time. How's that going to play out, do you think? Well, the U.S. dollar is a terribly flawed currency, Robert. I'm trying to get rid of all my U.S. dollars. <laughs> you know, I'm hoping, I think there's going to be a rally more coming uh, this year because so many people are pessimistic about the dollar, including whenever that happens, you usually have a big rally. But I plan to sell that rally. I hope this time next year I don't own a single U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is going the way of sterling, with all due respect. Yeah. So it's a sucker's rally. It's a sucker's rally. Sterling used to be the world's reserve currency. That changed, and it's going to happen with the American dollar. Unfortunately, I don't like saying it. I'm an American. But unfortunately, I have to live with facts. And do you think this huge trade deficit between America and China can be resolved? I mean, Hank Paulson, the Treasury Secretary, seems to spend half his life shuttling to and from Beijing, doesn't he? Yeah, it is a little embarrassing, isn't it, <laughs> that that's what he's doing. He's going around the world saying we believe in a strong dollar. And then he goes to China and says, please make the dollar go down. And then he goes to Japan and says, please make the dollar go down. Uh, can this problem be solved by a declining, uh, debasing the currency? Never in history have countries been able to solve their problems by debasing the currency. You, the UK used to try it over and over and over again for years. It never worked in the end. It takes something better than that. No, that's not going to solve America's problems. America's problems are much deeper than that. That's why I'm trying to sell my U.S. dollar. And that's why I suggest other people do too. Now, we mentioned earlier, of course, your, your expertise in commodities, and we're seeing oil. We've heard Goldman Sachs recently say $200 a barrel isn't out of the question. Would you agree with that? No, of course I would. I mean, no, there's been no great oil discovery, no major elephant discovery in over 40 years. I mean, all the great oil fields are in decline. The UK will be importing oil within the decade. I mean, the fields are depleting. And unless somebody discover, discovers a lot of oil, very accessible oil, very quickly, the surprise is going to be how high the price stays and how high it goes. In terms of what OPEC could do, we've seen President Bush, the, the Saudi Arabia, the only one with any spare capacity, has, has opened the spigot a little bit. But there is nobody really with spare capacity, is there? Saudi Arabia says they have Saudi, uh, spare capacity. They've been saying it for 10 years now. And every, you remember five years ago they said we're going to increase production to 12 million barrels. There are people who will tell you that Saudi Arabia has been depleting its oil fields. They've been pumping water in there. And that Saudi Arabia doesn't have that, oil, that spare capacity. Something is wrong somewhere. The Saudis keep saying prices are too high, there's plenty of oil, well then why don't they dump the oil on the market? Why don't they drown the speculators? They all blame it on the 29-year-old speculators. Drown them. Let them sit at their computers and pour the oil on their heads if there's so much oil. The problem is, Robert, there's not a lot of oil in the world. I just wanted to ask you finally, Jim, you've studied at Oxford and you've studied at Yale in, in America. 
Compare and contrast the different approaches of the US Federal Reserve in slashing rates and trying to pump prime the economy and the Bank of England, which has been rather more staid and inflationary led. What's your view? Which is the, the US, right one? The US Federal Reserve is being a, making disastrous mistakes. I'd rather have the Bank of England running the Fed right now. What I'd really like is the uh, EU uh, C, uh, bank, the central bank running the Federal Reserve. Or better still, I like the Chinese central bank. You know, the Chinese are raising interest rates. The Chinese are raising reserves requirements. They're trying to do something about the current the, the current uh, inflation problems. You know, in Australia, the central bank is trying to do something about it. The American central bank is a disaster. They're causing huge inflation in the world, not just in America. They're debasing the currency. They're trying to drive down the value of the dollar. The American central bank is probably the worst in the world. It is so bad, you can write this down, that I suspect that the American central bank will disappear in the next decade or two. Jim Rogers, thank you very much with that dire prediction. <laughs>